Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture in resonance. In the first lecture, we discussed a couple of examples uh, explaining the concept of resonance and resonance energy. In this video, we will talk about uh, the presence of this phenomenon of resonance in heterocycles. But first, let's see what heterocycles mean. These are molecules uh, that have a cyclic structure and one or more heteroatoms such as oxygen, nitrogen or sulfur may be present in that ring or cycle uh, present in the structure. So some of the examples of these heterocyclic molecules are furine and now I'll tell you uh, about only those examples in which resonance is possible. Of course, resonance is not possible in all heterocyclic molecules, but in some molecules with particular uh, structural feature. So we will discuss only those examples in which resonance is possible. So one of them is furan, and you can see uh, there is a five-membered ring in the structure with an oxygen and two double bonds are present, separated by a single bond, and that means the system is conjugated so conjugation of resonance is possible then we have pyrrole which again has a five membered ring but this time a nitrogen in the ring and uh, there is an exa another example of thiophene uh, which looks more or less similar to furan but uh, the only difference is that we have sulfur here uh, and a five membered ring is present and then uh, we're well known molecule that is Pyridine. Pyridine has a six-membered ring with a nitrogen in the structure. Now you can see that each of these molecules have a heteroatom in the structure. Uh, some have oxygen like furan, others have nitrogen like pyrrole and pyridine, and thiophene has sulfur. Now these heteroatoms are characterized by the presence of one or more uh, lone pairs on these heteroatoms. Now oxygen has two lone pairs, nitrogen has one lone pair and sulfur because it also belongs to the sixth group like oxygen has two lone pairs uh, associated with it. From the concept of conjugation which we have already discussed in another video, uh, the link you can find here is that the system can be delocalized uh, when there are double bonds in conjugation with a double bond or a double bond is in conjugation with lone pair. We have discussed some examples of such type of delocalization. So in this case, these lone pairs may or may not be involved in conjugation or resonance or delocalization with this conjugated pi bonds or pi orbitals. So let's see how resonance is possible in such type of heterocyclic molecules. So the first example is that of uh, pyrrole. Pyrrole again has a nitrogen, so nitrogen has only one lone pair. And on adjacent carbon there is a p orbital that has formed a pi bond with another p orbital on the adjacent carbon. So this double bond has a lone pair on the adjacent atom that is nitrogen in this case. Now these lone pairs can delocalize over and form a bond between this carbon and nitrogen form a pi bond here and as a result because this carbon can only form four bonds one of these bonds have to break and because it has three sigma bonds and a pi bond the weaker of these four is the pi bond and that it breaks in this direction shifting these two electrons towards this carbon. So as a result, we have a double bond between carbon and nitrogen. And now because nitrogen has formed four bonds and the fourth bond has formed at the expense of one of its lone pair, of its only lone pair. So it has somewhat lost control of its lone pair. And that is why now it has a positive charge and a negative charge originates here. Remember in the concept of resonance when you're drawing these uh, different uh, canonical structures the charges on the left and right hand side they should be equal. So this is a neutral form and this is a charge separated form plus one minus one is equal to zero and this also has a zero charge. So this negative charge is then shared between these two carbon atoms and as a result this pi bond shifts uh, towards this 
uh, carbon atom forming a negative charge here and we have a new double bond here this negative charge then shifts between carbon and nitrogen forming a double bond here and as a result this these electrons are shifted on this carbon forming a negative charge here this positive charge still remains on the negative uh, on the nitrogen atom again this negative charge is shared here a negative charge forms here and thus uh, finally shifting of these electrons give you the original first structure so now you can see that this lone pair is involved in conjugation or resonance with the pi system only these two pi electrons are not involved in resonance but this lone pair is also involved in resonance why why this lone pair is involved in resonance remember because of the uh, involvement of this lone pair a pi bond is formed here between the carbon and the nitrogen and you know the prerequisite for the formation of a pi bond is that the two orbitals must be parallel to each other and that means that if a double bond is formed between this carbon and nitrogen here the p orbital on this carbon atom and this orbital here which uh, is occupied by the lone pair both are parallel to each other so this lone pair the orbital in which this lone pair exists is parallel to these p orbitals on adjacent carbon atoms so that is why they can overlap and form a pi bond which in other words mean that this lone pair can be involved in resonance let's see another example and that of furan furan has an oxygen atom with two lone pairs now are both the lone pairs involved in resonance if you look at these structures here uh, this resonance or delocalization of electron looks pretty much similar to that of pyrrole so same as in pyrrole where the lone pair of nitrogen was delocalized over and finally we get the final structure in case of furan oxygen has two lone pairs and only one of these lone pairs is involved in conjugation the other still exists in all of these resonance structures so you can see only one lone pair is involved in resonance. Furan has similar uh, resonance phenomena happening as in case of thiophene. Thiophene and uh, furan both uh, have heteroatoms that belong to the same group. So sulfur also has uh, two lone pairs and both uh, one of them is involved in resonance. The other is not involved in resonance. So both are similar in a case of uh, resonance. Now why furan involves only one of the lone pair on oxygen and not the other. So let's explain this with the help of orbital diagram. So if you look at this structure, uh, all of the carbon atoms in furan are sp2 hybridized. So each of them has an unhybridized p orbital present on them. Oxygen on the other hand has two lone pairs. <coughs> And to avoid a repulsion, they have to be at maximum distance from each other. And so this oxygen, which is sp3 hybridized, uh, has a somehow tetra, a somewhat tetrahedral structure, which means that this orbital here is parallel to the pi network or the p orbitals present on all the carbon atoms, while the other orbital is perpendicular to the p orbitals. Now for the formation of a double bond or for resonance to happen or the double bond to form the orbitals must be parallel to each other and that means that only this orbital or lone pair of oxygen can overlap with the p orbital on adjacent carbon atom to form a double bond. This p orbital which is perpendicular is not involved in resonance and so you can see that for resonance to happen only one of the lone pair will be involved and the other is not involved and that exists uh, on the oxygen atom. And the same is true for furan, uh, for thiophene as well. Now let's see pyridine. Pyridine has a six membered ring with the nitrogen in the ring and it has three double bonds. Now here the nitrogen is double bonded to the carbon uh, 
it is different from uh, that of uh, pyrrole in which nitrogen was singly bonded to the adjacent carbon atom and the uh, nitrogen also had a hydrogen attached to it but in this case nitrogen it is sp2 hybridized so it has a double bond with the adjacent carbon atom now let's see if this lone pair on nitrogen is also involved in resonance with these three double bonds present in the pyridine so if you look at the structure of pyridine it looks like this each of the carbon atom in pyridine is sp2 hybridized and that means that each one has a p orbital an unhybridized p orbital present and as it, as i told you earlier this nitrogen also is sp2 hybridized so this also has an unhybridized p orbital and that is why it has formed a double bond with the adjacent carbon atom and as you know that the geometry around uh, an sp2 hybridized atom is trigonal planar so the geometry around this nitrogen would be trigonal planar so if we consider these two carbon atoms in one plane this lone pair will also exist in the same plane and at maximum distance from these two carbon atoms All right so this lone pair here would be perpendicular to the p orbitals to form a trigonal planar geometry around nitrogen so you see this carbon here this carbon and this lone pair this forms a trigonal planar geometry around the nitrogen and because it is perpendicular to the p orbitals it is not involved in resonance with the pi system so only the three double bonds are involved in resonance the lone pair on nitrogen in this case is not involved in resonance because it is perpendicular to the p orbitals of all the carbon atoms present in the molecule so this is how you can explain the resonance phenomena in heterocycles and as i told you earlier resonance may not be possible in all heterocycles uh, it is possible only in those molecules which have this conjugated system thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more lectures in basic concepts in organic chemistry